Hey guys, welcome to my April update. I know it is the 21st of May and I've been trying to get this done for ages, but imagine my surprise. I recorded a bunch of it here in uh, Portland, Corpus Christi, before we went to San Antonio and then to South Carolina and to Georgia. And when I was in San Antonio, I was trying to get it edited because I finished updating it there for the rest of April. And for whatever reason, the microphone um, did not pick up on the first sections. So I'm going to attempt to do a voiceover of it. So it should be interesting. So sorry for it being so late, um, but better late than never, right? So let's see if I can make this um, work. All right, here we go. We're going to try to make this work. So this is me probably saying, welcome back. Thanks for, you know, coming and thanks for uh, subscribing and, you know, comments and all those good things. And probably telling you what a busy uh, month we had in April. It, it was it was a little crazy, um, you know, but we'll talk more about that in a second. We You see I'm wearing my Rio Doso hat. We did go to Rio Doso in, uh, in April and uh, was basically a test flight of our um, travel plans. You know, um, we bought a plane, obviously, I think I've said that before. And uh, we'd, we'd like to find somewhere to go in the summer that's not so hot as South Texas is. And so this was kind of a trial run to go visit the mountains in, uh, in New Mexico. And it was actually a really successful trip. Um, the flight was was fine, no problems at all flying into, because at elevation, if any of you are private pilots, that flying in at elevation um, does change significantly because the air is thinner. There's not as much lift on your airplane. You don't have as much response. And so, yeah, but it was fun. We'll probably talk more about that later. So what I did at the beginning of the month, I think I'm getting ready to show you my first, um, first of the month start, which of course is always, well, at least this year, is my um, Songbird Garden series from Cottage Garden Samplings. And for April, that was Promise of Spring. And that is on a 32 count Opal Lugana in Frost by Miss Ditch Me. And it didn't get a whole lot done, but as I was busy uh, cleaning the pool and replanting flowers and just did a lot. I think I had like 15,000 steps that day. It was, it was definitely a busy day. But, uh, you know, and I, of course, um, I don't know if I put that in my, in there or not, but a lot of times if I don't have all of the uh, threads, I have been um, substituting them out with color and cotton. So now we're on to plans. And so my plans for the rest of of May, I guess, because we just finished April, was uh, to work on that, I guess, one more day at least until I get the new Dark Queen of the Earth, um, because it had not dropped. It drops usually on the first and it had not dropped. Um, I don't think it dropped until after midnight my time. So I didn't get to start working on it until like the second or third of April. And I think that's probably in May, the same thing. Cause we're, we're talking about April, but it's in May, right? No. We're talking about March. Heck, I don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so crazy. No, yeah, we're, we're talking about April. Yeah, and uh, okay, so then, of course, we have our, um, our Dark Queen of the Earth. Did I show you that already? I wasn't watching. I wasn't paying attention. It's been too long. So much has happened since then. I don't even remember what I'm talking about. That'll teach me not to uh, make sure that the correct microphone is selected when I'm doing my recording. Oh, no, here I'm getting it. I see my little tulip pink bag, and that is my Dark Queen of the Earth bag. Love that bag. Got it on Amazon, so I don't know if it's still available on Amazon or not, but that's where I got it. And uh, so I've been keeping up, really, I've been so proud of myself. I've been keeping caught up on this, um, on this uh, stitch along because the... Uh, Last time on the Dark Queen of the Sea, I got stuck. When, when the hair pack came out, I couldn't make a decision. And I got so stuck. So uh, I got really behind. And I still haven't finished that one. But I will. 
So I think I'm just showing you where we got to in March when I finished March off before I started it in April because it, I don't I see I don't think I even had the download yet or maybe I had just gotten it and um, had started on it yet but we'll see in about two seconds when I hold it up maybe oh my god I'm slow come on speed it up I don't know what the heck I'm talking about here <laughs> but it did go on vacation with me I think we left for Rio Doso on like the 7th I think it was the 7th of April maybe oh and I also finished the last uh, part of my whip parade last month there we go finally my god I'm so slow oh I must have recorded this after we got home from duh totally I'm wearing a redoso hat Yes, recorded it after we got home. So this was after I finished the April portion. And I think I'm showing you my eyeballs. Did I know the eyeballs were done the last time, right? That's the only thing that I really changed. I really wanted her to have glow in the dark eyeballs. But this one came together really nicely. You can see all the hair looks great, right? Love that hair. I don't care if Baron puts out a hair pack, I'm fine. I didn't get stuck this time and that hair is beautiful. So it's awesome. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, got all the hair done, and then, come on, zip the dang bag up already, pokey. <laughs> this is so funny, narrating a video later. It's hilarious. I'm sure I was saying some really what I thought were deep and thoughtful things as I'm trying to get organized. And I think I'm pulling up my Hands on Design Gather Round Club here, yeah, because that's the box, because I finished the spring sections I believe I did I think I think that's what I'm getting ready to show you here is all of these the spring ones and this is um, gather butterflies I believe and so you have yeah oh wildflowers yes gather wildflowers so we've got quilted wildflowers on the left oh my god hold it up in the screen dang it this is pitiful <laughs> anyway gather wildflowers is in the middle and then on the left is quilted wildflowers and on the right is um, cottage wildflowers and that's part of the gather round club from hands-on design and no I have not even started finishing them yes I really 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 need to okay there I go all right time I got it in frame so that's quilted wildflowers and then gather wildflowers and that gather wildflowers the words are one over one takes forever but it looks really good and that is the cottage wildflowers and on the quilted wildflowers yeah I, I did I screwed up a color the, the symbols are too close to each other and I stitch upside down and it was the wrong side up and so yeah it is what it is <laughs> it's okay it's mine right Person, little personalization never hurt anybody I think I finished those right before we went on vacation yeah because um, I'm, I'm trying to follow along with where I was in my um, in my Instagram because you know I usually post every day on Instagram but I have not uh, kept up with that this last week since we've been traveling and moving around I feel like I haven't been home in forever oh oh that's stash that's a big pile of stash so is that one that one's from Leslie's shop from under the sea fabrics in San Antonio. I love going to Leslie's. Yeah, I got a bunch more stuff the last time I went. I don't know what I'm getting ready to show you here. We'll see. Maybe I'm talking about plans. I think I must be talking about plans what I'm going to take to New Mexico with. No, we're already home from New Mexico. So I'm probably talking about what I took to New Mexico, New Mexico with me. Easter was in there somewhere. So happy Easter, everybody, since I missed that. Ah, yes, took that one. This will back onto the touching all my whips. That's Peace Loving Candy Canes by Sue Hillis Designs. And that I believe is just a 32 count white linen, probably from Hobby Lobby back in the day. I got quite a bit done on that. You wouldn't believe how intensive that thing is and how many color changes there are in that little bitty border. That candy cane border has like five colors in it. And then it's all going to be backstitched later. 
Yeah, it's going to take forever. Anyway, I did get quite a bit done on it. I'm pretty happy. And I've been trying to do a little bit of the backstitching as I go. So, like, the candy cane, um, the big candy cane is, is fully backstitched already. And then it should be Vinny. Yeah, that's the Vinny bag. This one is just the cutest little thing in the world. Um, it's out of, I don't remember what magazine that thing came out of. I'm probably telling you there, but I don't remember. Look, it's a cross stitch, just cross stitch from who knows when. It's really old. Anyway, it's called Vinny, V-I-N-N-E-Y, and it is the cutest stinking little reindeer you've ever seen in your life. Flying over a house. Yeah, isn't he adorable? And so I got little Mr. Vinny the reindeer completely finished and like backstitched and everything and then got a a lot done on the house and trees and so I'm getting there we go getting ready to show you oh come on pull it up a little bit show the rest of the trees anyway that's about all I got done I was trying to get all the little colors before I got ready to do a bunch of fill in with uh, the yellowy gold color that the house is Because there's like little flowers all the way around it. And then there's a whole bunch of two different kinds of yellow to do before I get down a little bit further. And some more white, of course, with the snow. And obviously at that point we were home. So I, that, I think I did work on both of this. Was I home already? Yeah, I, I think I spent another day after we got home on Vinny because he was too dang cute. And then, oh yeah, there's my quilter. That's the Bats and Boots quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. Or booze and bats, I don't remember. Anyway, um, I finished it like a long time ago, but I finally got around to taking it to the quilter and I was showing you that the, the cute bat um, pantograph that she quilted it in and I got the binding put on and it turned out really cute and I can't wait to hang it on the wall this year or I don't know, maybe use it as a table cover, who knows. Well design. And then I think my next whip that I'm getting ready to show you here is Consider the Lilies, which is a Janlin kit that is super, super old. And I don't know if you can see that sticker or not, but I got that thing at Big Lots back in like the, I don't know, early 90s. And it actually has an even weave in it and has a ton of specialty stitches, including candle wicking with candle wicking thread. If you've ever done candle wicking or not, I started it this time because I wanted to get into a couple of more specialty stitches. The candle wicking, that thread's thick. Um, it's interesting, but uh, it's pretty well charted, so it's pretty easy to follow all of the different stitches. But um, it was, yeah, it's interesting. So I got, yeah, it, there, there you go. I'm showing you that it does have all of the cute little stitches. And then, of course, I think I'm getting ready to show you Come on, hold it up. I think it's a 28 count even weave. Feels like a Jobelin. It's a little thicker. You know, it could be a Monaco. It's kind of thicker. So that light cream color that you see behind the U there, that is the candle wicking portion. And it's probably hard to see it really good. But it turns out really cool. And then I, I think I was telling you a little bit earlier there, I made a mistake at the very beginning when I first started it. The back stitching around the letters is supposed to be in a different color blue. And I totally screwed that up. But you know what? It's all right. Again, personalization. It's all good. Ah, uh, then our next project. Again, we're still touching all the whips here. Trying to touch all of my whips at least once this year. I don't think there's any way possible I'm going to get through all of them. But I, I'm, we'll get there. And this is Lighthouses. This is by another uh, Jan Lynn, just a chart. I forget the name of the guy who actually did the artwork. But I freaking love this pattern. Um, I believe it is on, well, there you go. You might be able to see his name there, Roger something. But he, uh, the... It's either a, I think it's a 28 count, just um, Jobelin or, or um, Lugana. I don't remember. Probably Lugana because it's got that kind of feel to it. 
It has so many colors in it, but it is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous, and I absolutely love this chart. And that's why I won't end up touching all of my whips this year is because I just get to stitch it on one. I'm like, oh, I want to spend more time on it. So I did get quite a bit done on this one and still have more blues and greens to fill in um, up both directions, up and down. I mean, it's huge. But the uh, it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I got a lot filled in, and I was very happy with that. I think I ended up spending like three days on it and, and would have stitched on it even longer. And that's, again, why I won't get to touching all of my whips yet this year, because I spend two or three days on them. And when you've got 238 whips and you spend two or three days on them, that's a lot more than 365 days. All right, our next one should be coming up, should be Indian Peacock. This is a dimensions kit that I've had for a really long time. And instead of stitching all of that background, cause that's supposed to be like just on a tan Ada. And I tossed the Ada, actually I gave it to somebody. I don't remember who, but anyway, gave it to somebody, maybe my mom. But it's uh, the, I found a fabric that I thought looked really good for the background. And so I just, and that is a Wexford linen. I can tell just by looking at it from Silk Weaver. And, uh, yeah, I just changed it, and so I will not be stitching any of the background. I actually got quite a bit done on that. There are so many freaking color changes and blends in that thing. It takes forever, but it's really cool, and it's going to be beautiful when it's done. Oh, I was working on that while I was at my mom's. I think I might have taken one or two projects down there. Don't remember what all I took. Maybe it was just that one, because that looks like that's the only thing I stitched on while I was down there. And then I think the next thing I started was back to my Gather Round Club. And I worked on, come on. I don't even know what we're talking about here. Probably plans, but the next installment, let's see, let's see, do I pull it up? Maybe. Oh, there's me saying next thing, I could read my lips. Yes, my Gather Round Club, It's that's the summer installment. This one's called Gather Butterflies. So you see quilted butterflies on the left, gather butterflies in the middle, and then the cottage um, butterflies, I think it's actually like greenhouse butterflies or something on the right. And I started on that. And again, the centerpiece is one over one on that gather butterflies. And I have not really done a whole lot more on it since, since then. I think I might've worked on it one more day, but you'll see that in a couple of weeks because it's already the 21st, like a week and a half, 10 days. Yeah, and then apparently that next, the next day I didn't do any stitching. We were getting ready to leave for San Antonio for the rest of the month um, and ended up leaving a day early because we were taking um, the plane up and we needed the weather to be good. So I was packing, stitching stuff. So, oh, that's what that was. You could read my lips. <laughs> And I think this is two months of haul because I think I forgot to do it last go around. And so it's kind of been sitting there gathering dust. And of course I picked up some stuff while we were in New Mexico. And I don't know what the heck I'm saying, but I've been trying to get better about not buying duplicates. Anybody who's been around and watching my stuff for a long time knows that I have made that mistake many times. Oh, okay. That's first haul. So that is milk paints. If anybody is familiar with lavender and lace patterns, um, that is the, or is it needle, needle paints? Needle paints. Milk paints are different. That's like actual paint. Needle paints. <laughs> 
um, that were made by um, Marilyn Leavitt Emblem specifically for her uh, some of her lavender lace um, patterns. And they're kind of hard to find nowadays because obviously I don't think they make them anymore. And luckily, one of my good buddies uh, who lives in Austin, North Austin, went up to um, her LNS up in Copper's Cove, and they had a bunch of them. And so she very fortunately was able to pick these, pick those up for me and send it to me. So uh, now I have all of the needle paints I need for all of my lavender and lace patterns. And what I was showing you there was some cute little buttons and uh, pom-poms and stuff that I picked up from Joann's on sale. Always got to see what Joann's has got on sale because you never know what you might find for finishing things. I have no idea what I'm getting ready to show you here. Probably stuff from Leslie's. Let's see. I think I just dumped it all out. <laughs> oh, this should be interesting. I think those might be new flosses from Market. Because, yes, I, I missed my Market haul earlier in, uh, in March. I forgot to do haul that month. And that's one of the new Nora Corbett's with the beads. Although those could have been the threads to go with the Nora Corbett's too. It's quite possible. The other new Nora Corbett and the beads. Oh, that's the new colors for market. There you go. I think that was some more new colors. Yep, I'm showing you all the different ones. You've probably all seen them by now. And those just say limited edition, but I don't remember what color it's supposed to be. I think I wrote it on the back of them, but I don't remember. And apparently I'm being clumsy and dropping things. <laughs> These are all the new week's dye works, I think, that came in as part of market. God, good grief. I gotta get better about getting stuff in frame. That's terrible. I do like having all of the flosses so that I can uh, make sure that I have um, things on hand when I get ready to start stuff. And I think that must be the new um, cottage. Nope, that's not the right word. I don't remember what flosses those are. Oh, that's my new needle minder. I solemnly swear a lot. <laughs> Love that. There we go. That was the new, uh, the new flosses all together in the bag. Ah, uh, that was fabric of the month. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's very pretty. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, so that um, that's not a new one, obviously. That's just something that I didn't have in my stash. Same with that one. Because Leslie had a President's Day sale in February, and I bought a bunch of junk. Obviously, it's not junk. But, oh, and that's a quirky Quaker. I love those. It's a turtle. So cute. Oh, Market got that. Cannot wait to try that sucker. That's a uh, turn, turn, turn by Noteworthy Needle, I think. And it's one of those little things that flips. So you flip it for each season. All four seasons are on it. You see, you know, winter, fall, spring, summer. 
and I just thought that was the coolest thing. I don't know how I'm going to construct it, but it looks pretty interesting. And then all of the uh, polar plunge uh, patterns from Kathy, got all of those from Hands on Design. I got the other two this month when I was up there, but you'll see those later. Mad for plaid, another mad for plaid, and another mad for plaid. And thought that was cute. St. Patrick's Day from uh, Primrose Cottage Stitches. I think that's who that was. I'm flipping them up there awfully dang fast, aren't I? I probably should slow down. It's funny watching this from uh, a viewer's point of view. Uh, I can tell I need to slow down a little bit, right? And hold them up there a little bit longer. Because you can barely see that. Because I am not good about putting stuff in the notes. And I'm terrible about that. I, I don't have time. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly frank. It takes so much time to put these things together and put it up. And I spend so much time on the computer already anyway. I have no idea what I'm telling you. I know I went to visit a um, quilting store in Rio Doso or north of Rio Doso that had um, some cross stitch stuff too. I don't think I think I only bought anything cross stitch there, but I did buy. I like to buy a little something to commemorate every trip, and so I found a really cute little Rio Doso quilt kit. That's like the quilt by the row. So if anybody knows about quilting by the row, you'll see what this is, and it's got all the pieces are laser cut already. It's, oh, yeah, that's what I'm showing you. Really, really cute. It'll look like that at the bottom with the, the elk and everything. Well, that's probably part of what I was telling you at the very beginning. The, uh, holy crap, there are elk everywhere and wildlife everywhere in Rio. So, um, wild horses, very cool. But the elk, they poop everywhere. Oh, my God. We were playing golf. And literally, the golf course is just littered with elk poo. It's all over the place. <laughs> And it, at some point, I mean, it's, and it doesn't, it's not like soft and smeary like dog poo if you were to step in it. Eventually, you just give up. Um, another new mirror that I got, probably from Leslie's. Oh, no, 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 I got that one on Stash Unload. I'm trying to remember where I get things from. And then this is another really cool quilt kit, quilt kit that I saw while I was at that shop in Rio Doso. And I bought the panel for it and some of the um, matching uh, coordinating fabric. Isn't that gorgeous? Don't know how long it'll take me to put that together, but I don't quilt as much as I cross stitch. Maybe one of these days I'll have more time. I've kind of told myself that I'm not starting any new quilts until I finish all of my current quilts in process. I have no idea what I'm telling you here. Probably telling you about Ulk Poo. <laughs> I just can't, I mean, it was unreal, but we had um, a really good time while we were in Rio Do. So we um, rented one of the little side-by-side -side UTV things and went riding through, uh, there's like National Forest Land. It's really cool. It's completely um, GPS guided. You just follow the map on the GPS and yeah, it was really kind of cool. Had a nice time doing that. Although they didn't tell me how dusty we were going to get. Oh, now I'm showing you stuff on my Timu order. I don't know if anybody, any of y'all have ordered from Timu before or not, but that was like a dollar something. And they're really great for floss bags. I think I was telling you I was going to give that one to Hannah. <laughs> it didn't happen. I kept it. Totally kept it. Have all of my threads in, uh, in one of my other, um, for a project, completely completely kept that baby and that's the pink and white one that has my floss for another one i will tell you that the zipper broke on the pink and white one like within a week of getting it the green one is still working just fine oh and that's the little notebook that i ordered for hannah because she likes keeping her like class notes and stuff in small notebooks like that and they are not cheap. If you were to, if you buy them from uh, from Walmart or Office Depot or Staples or whatever, they are not cheap. And that was like, I don't know, three bucks. And she's paying like ten. So they are definitely inexpensive. And everything so far has been pretty decent quality. They're um, 
the next thing I'm showing you is um, some quilting cotton uh, fat quarters that I bought because they're kind of cute <laughs> and it it's good quality fabric it feels like quilting quality fabric that you would get from a quilt store and yeah you, obviously you see what I bought them they're adorable But uh, yeah, I was really um, pretty impressed. They have a lot of the diamond painting kits are super cheap. I mean, like $2. And everything has been decent quality so far. The uh, the little pink and white bag with the br zipper breaking, that's the first thing I've had really that um, has not been as good a quality. Oh, there's my little thing. I ordered those from Chantal's and I got an extra pack from Leslie. So I should have enough to finish all of the polar plunge guys when I get them finished <laughs> got to start them first right but uh and then I think I got the lady that I think it's lady at um trim for him too but I think I got that this month that's some of the uh diamond painting kits that I bought for like I mean literally these things are like two dollars three dollars and I think I finally figure out that there are actually pictures of what they are on there. And I think I finally show them to you when I discover that. Oh my God, close your mouth. I'm totally catching flies. <laughs> oh, this is so funny being able to watch this from a different point of view. Oh yeah, you can barely see that. And that picture is so tiny. Yeah, you can't even see that at all, can you? Absolutely pitiful. It's like a little bee. I don't know if you can tell what that is. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see it. All right, come on. Give me the program here. Oh, apparently I'm done. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, no, I'm just coughing my head off. <sighs> probably needed a drink. Probably going to stop and get a drink. I probably have tea next to me, which I usually do. All right, put all the stuff away a little faster. Ah, so life update. I think this is where I'm getting ready to tell you guys about our crazy plans. So I think I've said before, proud mama moment in the last last month's video, how happy I was that my uh, daughter was uh, selected for an internship at the Savannah River National Laboratories out in South Carolina. Um, it's outside Aiken. I don't think it's actually called, there's like a town. I think the closest actual town is by is Jackson. But the University of South Carolina at Aiken um, allows them to rent a dorm room for the summer for the internship program. And so we were planning on going to San Antonio the like probably the next day after this, or maybe it was that afternoon. I don't remember because um, the weather was going to get bad. And we were dropping our plane off to have some upgraded um, if you're if you're a plain person, two Garmin G5s installed. <laughs> so getting rid of some of the old vacuum system. And so we were taking it up to New Braunfels to the uh, electronics. I had to drop it off and then um, spend some time up there with Hannah. She was almost finished with school for the semester and getting her packed up and ready to move to South Carolina for the summer. So she and I drove out there together. And we'll talk more about that when I do my video this month. But that was the plan to, um, we ended up leaving San Antonio on, the plan was to leave on Saturday morning on the, I think, heck, I don't even know what, what month is that? That's April. Yes, we, um, we went up on the 28th of April and then we stayed up there until Kevin got got the plane back I think on the 6th of April and then on the 7th we got everything finished packing up it was pouring rain so we planned on leaving on Saturday morning 
and I'll tell you all about our trip in this month's video because it was kind of crazy because that that's May stuff what else am I am I talking about oh I'm telling you about the things I'm taking with me to San Antonio oh yeah that was planned so yep I took ink circles that's called kaleidoscope I'll tell you more about that when I do this month's video update because I got a lot done but if you follow me on Instagram you already know that and that is pretty pumpkins by Glenn in place took that one too I took I know I took gather round with me even though I don't think I worked on it the entire time I might have worked on it one night but I don't think I got very much done Yep, Valentine Sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. Took that one. That's on 40 count, one over one. I didn't work on it until we got home, like literally yesterday. It was the first time I worked on it. So there's not a whole lot done on it. And I worked on it like for an hour last night watching a TV show. So I'm going to work on it today too. Because there were several days that I stitched while we were traveling this month, but I did not put anything on Instagram because I forgot. <laughs> we were so busy doing things, going and doing and just having a good time. I just completely forgot to uh, post anything. I think we're getting ready to wrap this up here. Maybe. At least that part. Or not. I think I got two more minutes of something. Surely, am I going to show you something else? Maybe. I don't know. I look like I'm rolling my eyes. Oh, no. Nope. I'm going to show you one more project. At least. Oh, yes. The other plans. Nightingale by Nora Corbett, Mirabilia. Um, I've had it kitted up and ready to go, and I couldn't decide when exactly I was going to uh, start it, but I think I started it on, what the heck am I doing there? Apparently I was looking something up for you. So anyway, um, Nurses Week. Nurses Week, oh, Nurses Day was actually like May 6th, I think. But Nurses Week was that whole following week. Am I looking at, oh, I was like, why does it not have that? I'm looking at a different map, different map, different calendar on my desk in front of me. Yes, Nurses Day was Saturday, May 6th. And so I think I ended up starting it on Monday, May 8th for Nurses Day. And then, of course, plans for 1st of May start on my, uh, next cottage garden sampling it's, uh songbird series and that's a bluebird of happiness <laughs> all my flosses and i do substitute if i don't have all of the um, i think they call we i think those are weeks diverts or maybe not i don't remember which ones they are but if i don't have them i'll substitute something up very similar for our color cotton and or another floss i've got tons of other flosses and you know as long as it's variegated, you still get the same effect. Love that fabric. I don't remember what it is. It's a Wexford linen, but it's beautiful. And then, of course, I think I'm telling you I'm going to work on the May version, May, May segment of Dark Queen of the Earth when it comes out. And yes, I did finish it, even though you're going to see it on this month, this month's video in 10 days. And I'm telling you, bye. End of the month wrap up. Oh, okay. I think I don't have to narrate this. All right. Hey, guys, it's Sherry. It's May 1st. Happy May Day. Um, doing a quick update from what I have worked on since I recorded things before we left the house in Portland. And it's, it's not a lot. Been busy getting the kid ready to go to South Carolina and working on the condo. Did some more painting. All good stuff. I got new curtains hung up. They look a lot nicer than the ugly ones that were here before. But let's see. I brought several projects with. First one being Kaleidoscope by Ink Circles. 
Sorry, I hope that wasn't glaring too bad. And I decided to work, and I did this on 14 count ADA, and that was stupid because apparently this is the one ink circles design that has fractional stitches. This is where I got to. I finished this quarter of the black pieces and then started filling in the colors. And I can't see that there's a very light yellow there and kind of a light yellowy green 772, by the way. Um, but it's really great. This chart comes with two sets of charts. One, I'm going to show it way back here so you can see it, that has just the black, and one that has all the colors. It makes it a whole lot easier to stitch. And it's a lot less confusing than with all of the charts on top of each other, all of the symbols. So there's that one. And then, do I have the other one over here? I don't think I do. Give me two seconds. I will pause and go get it. All right, that wasn't too long, right? Just snap of a finger. Second one is Pretty Pumpkins by Glendon Place. Let me get the glare off there. Pretty, right? I love that frame job. And here's where I'm at. I just got a little bit more of the green filled in down here. And this is on, I really don't remember what it's on. But give me two seconds and I'll tell you. Obviously the other one was on white Ada. Just something cleaning out out of the stash. But let me look in my list. And that is on 28 Count Opal Lugana in Thornhaven by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. I also worked some, not a lot, because I haven't been home that much this month, it seems like, in April. I worked some on my uh, The Last Supper, which obviously I did not bring it with me, because um, it's on Lowry stand at home. But uh, I'll put a picture in here. Of what that looked like when I finished on it. Um, been working on the back stitching a lot, trying to get that moving along. And uh, so plans, I think I talked about in the stuff that I recorded before I left the house, but basically um, I started my uh, Bluebird of Happiness today and got a few stitches in on a phone call that I was getting to listen to, even though this should truly go on to the May May recording. That's what I got worked on today. That's again the <clears throat> sorry, allergies. Bluebird of Happiness by Cottage Garden Samples. These are really nice charts, very well put together. I've got all of my floss, so I have several projects to keep with me. I also have my Dark Queen of the Earth, which should hopefully be dropping the pattern sometime today. So I can get that downloaded. And then I also have my Gather Round Club with me, which I have not worked on since I showed it to you last time. Um, but figured that'd be good car stitching because it's nice and bright. We shall see. But that's basically what's going on. Just uh, trying to get everything ready to go. It's, uh, it's going to be a busy month. But other than that, I will uh, say thank you again for spending time with me. I appreciate that. And until next time, bye, y'all. Happy stitching. So I definitely want to say thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, all of those fun things if you made it this far. This was, a uh, again, a lesson in making sure that I have everything set up right before I start recording like I said, I'm rusty. I haven't been redoing this for quite some time, so uh, I'm getting getting back in the hang of it. But it uh, won't be long, 10 days or so, and uh, and I'll do the next one. I think, I think in June I'm really going to start going back to the vlog style. It was just a little bit easier than trying to remember everything that I've done all month long. So uh, again, thanks. 
thanks for bearing with this. I, I, I hope this was a little bit funny. I, it definitely showed me a little bit of um, critiquing myself and making sure that I uh, kind of slowed down a little bit. That's, um, I didn't realize uh, how quickly I was flopping stuff up on the screen. So, and to be better in focus and in the frame. So yeah, it was a good lesson, I think for me. So again, thanks for being here and I will talk to you in a few days.